So this is actually the third episode recording in a row, quite in a row, not not just not just really in a row, but quite in a row. Before this episode, I did just make a little break, wasting some fucking time, fortunately. But this one gonna be about a new James Clear or another James Clear dot com uh, article, which I think is gonna be great, but we'll see. You know, but normally they are just really fucking great. I really enjoy them, but but yeah. With that being said, hello, welcome back to next episode of the Self Development with Tactics fucking podcast. Um, you might be wondering why I do actually record three episodes a day, even though I should I should actually record four because um, today I you know I, I really had the time to do it, but I was you know. I was recording for tomorrow and yeah, fuck, wait a second, today is Thursday, fucking hell, I do just, pro- yeah, I, I do actually have to record more than that, yeah, because I, I don't know, you know, the problem is I don't know if I'm at home tomorrow and therefore I can't record, and I do not actually know whether I'm going to be at home. Uh, I'm going to be at home just on, t- tomorrow is Friday, on on Saturday as well. You know, this is the problem. I probably have to record another one to be kind of safe, you know, to actually have my two episodes. And this is, this is the whole problem, you know, I do want to have two episodes a single day, which is, you know, then, then really the problem because I do just have to record just them in previous, which is something, which is totally something. But I do just also have to say that I'm just somehow practicing for the um, for the time where I'm not going to be at home in next class, actually, or in the next year where we are going to Amsterdam, actually. Going to be, I think, an amazing one because my parents said, okay, Amsterdam is just a pretty nice city with uh hopefully also nice people and so on <laughs> and not yeah we're not going to go there because of the wheat we're gonna go there because of you know just the artists like van gogh and and you know whomever but yeah uh, i think i'm not gonna just lose a lot of time here but i just have to quickly think about whether i need to record another one after this as well so this is actually the third one for today I, I really need one for today, this is what's for sure, and then I actually do have, so I actually would have to record two more, if it would actually be the case that I won't be, well, no, uh, the thing is, I'm hopefully gonna do it like, uh, so then that I'm actually at home for some time on Saturday, I think that's, yeah. I think that's alright. I think I can do this because, you know, recording five episodes a fucking day is not something that is, you know, the recording as such is, is not is not the bad thing about it. The whole bad and fucked up thing about it is just uploading everything, making the descriptions, making the thumbnails and all these things is, is quite like, yeah, not involved into actually making the episode. And I do also have to make the post for Saturday, actually. Yeah, and I do actually do have to make even more posts, but I'm gonna have to do them tomorrow. Well, it's complicated. It's complicated and quite a lot of work. So, you know, those people who are being like, okay, you know, this YouTube thing and those social media, Instagram kind of thing, it's really easy, you know, you do not have to do anything. They are not doing enough. They are literally not doing enough. (laughs) Or at least not doing as much as I'm doing. And I do not really want to tap my back. Just the honest truth. Wait a second. Because I think this is going to provide us with a little more light so that you can actually see me. But yeah, um, as you might can see on the screen, if you're on a podcast, you can see nothing. But we are going ahead with a James Clear article called or titled How to be happy when everything goes wrong. Uh, Which I think pretty interesting. And I do assume that this is also going to be a pretty interesting and good article because this is what I'm used to from James Clear. 
or used by, never mind. This is what I used to, you know, according or just, you know, when I'm thinking about James Clear articles. But I'm gonna read. So in the summer of 2010, Rachel Friedman was preparing for one of the best periods of her life. She was recently engaged, surrounded by her best friends and enjoying her bachelorette party. Friedman or Friedman and her friends were spending the day at the pool when one of them playfully pushed her into the shallow end of the water. Friedman floated slowly to the top of the pool until her face, until her face emerged. It was immediately obvious that something was wrong. She isn't a joke. This isn't a joke, she said. Her head had struck the bottom of the pool and shattered two uh, vertebrae. And shattered two two vertebrae. In particular, the fracture of her C6 vertebrae severed her spinal cord and left her permanently paralyzed from the chest down. She would never walk again. Well, you know, what I do have to think about here is how fucking bad must this friend be feeling now? Just having, having to think of your friend being paralyzed for the rest of her life because of you. This must just be really fucked up. This really has to be fucked up. Just really fucking. It's really not that easy. It's, it's, yeah, it's a severe one. It's, it's, it's not nice. It really is not. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, you know, just must feel really fucking bad. Um, we are just so happy, which is a quote, apparently. Uh, one year later, Rochelle Friedman became Rochelle Chapman as she married her new husband. And also, I think for her husband, it must be a challenge, I guess. Even though, like, you know, a lot of people say, like, okay, you know, the outer experience of people don't matter. Like, it only means, uh, only the character means something to me. I don't know. I really don't know if it is actually always the case as, as people say it. I hope at least, you know, it would be great. I think, you know, it, it would really be great because, you know, I guess chances are just pretty high that you're going to find a person that is um, by their character pretty much fitting you um, rather than just having a or searching for a partner that is just, um, yeah, that you like by their looks. And you're also liked by their character, I guess. Even though this is just a weird conversation I'm just having right now, I guess. I think you get what I mean. I really think so. But I just have to drink something, I'm sorry. <sighs> so she decided to share some of her own thoughts on the whole experience during an online question and answer session in 2013. She started... She she started by discussing some of the challenges you might expect. It was hard to find a job that could accommodate her physical disabilities. It could be frustrating and uncomfortable to deal with the nerve pain. Well, I think so. I really think so. It must really not feel good being paralyzed. But, but the thing that I also have to say is that we should be just really grateful. And I'm really grateful for those people who are actually par paralyzed, not, in, not for the sake of them being paralyzed but because they have way more way more chances and way more options and way more decisions they can make than 50 years ago you know i think um the whole infrastructure for example got you know way more developed so that they can actually move everywhere and and i do think this is actually just a must in europe that uh buildings have to just um yes yeah, so, so People with physical disabilities have to be able to just, you know, go around or uh, drive around in in all the, at least, I think, official kind of or government, governmental uh, kind of buildings, which is, I think, good, which is incredibly good for those people because they just, yeah, they can do way more. And, and yeah, and I do hope by time... Um, a lot of things hopefully gonna change even more so that those people can actually do do again way more than than today maybe um, also in terms of sports I hope you know I guess um, especially the equipment you you would need for example if you would play just uh, wheelchair basketball which is something that I just pretty much like that it even exists you know 
I, I do think you just have to be grateful for those things. Um, but I think the, the wheelchair, you know, must be just incredibly expensive, you know, because I do think it's not in just regular wheelchair. I think, um, actually, I guess the wheels are somehow angled to some degree, which is not the case for all wheelchairs, apparently, or just not for the normal ones, I guess, at least. Um, but I'm really grateful for those people that they actually have the chance to do something, you know, and actually have way more chances than, as I said, 50 years ago, or maybe even 20 years ago, unfortunately. Um, but she also shared a variety of surprisingly positive answers. For example, when, uh, when asked if things changed for the worse, she said, well, things did change, but I can't say in a bad way at all. Then when asked uh, about her relationship with her husband, she said, I think we are just so happy because my injury could have been worse. Which is actually the truth. And I do think now, is she actually able to be pregnant or to get pregnant? Because I don't know. You know, I do think and I do guess. You know, the problem that I'm seeing that is that she isn't able to get an orgasm anymore. Which is fucked up, you know? It is just a really minor thing. It, it really is. It is just something small, but I guess it still is a part of just living, I guess, to some degree. Which is, like, yeah. You know, it's not it's not nice, you know? The more, I think, disabilities you have, the, the worse it, of course, and obviously is. Thank you for this thing, Christopher. I have not thought about this. Um... But I do don't think so. I guess, you know, the problem that I'm seeing there is that, you know, only because she doesn't feel anything doesn't actually mean that uh, she is not able to be pregnant. Unless there is some, some other disabilities she is having with her internal organs or something. You know, this could also be the case. I don't know how much the uh, your spine and your... your I think head, I think we were actually talking about the head. I don't know how much they're correlated to, to your whole body and to your inner organs and to all those things. I, I really don't. I, I really, really don't. But I, maybe, yeah. But I don't know. You know, let's, let's go ahead. Um, how is it possible to be happy when everything in life seems to go wrong? As it turns out, Rachelle, Rachelle's situation can reveal a lot about her about how our brains respond to traumatic events and what actually makes us happy. And I do just also have to admit and also have to point out that I'm so incredibly grateful and this is just something that I um, quite often think about, to be honest. I'm so incredibly grateful that I do not have any disabilities, that I can fucking walk, that I can eat, that I can, you know, well, this is kind of mixed up with uh, the general things that I'm grateful for, that I even have something to eat, that I even have something to drink, that I have a roof above my head, or over my head, actually. But I'm really fucking happy that I really can do the sports that I want to do and that I like to do, and that I've always been able to do them. For sure, you know, we all have some disabilities. I have scoliosis, which means that my, I don't know, my back is, uh, so my spine is basically an S, which is not that great. Really, it is not that great. But I guess, you know, it's actually given me an advantage over, over other people in terms of my speed. I guess that I'm actually able to run faster because of it. Because I do just have scoliosis or as scoliosis. Um, which I guess shifts my, I think, gravity point it is called, um, to a lower level. Which, uh, lets me, uh, which lets me to be able, which lets me be able to... Um, also angle my whole body or my upper body just way lower than I think normal people that do not have any disabilities. But in general, I'm just really fucking grateful that I can do the sports, that I can do, just use my fucking legs, that, ca that I can walk. You know? Um, yeah. I'm very happy for that. The surprising truth about happiness. There is a social psychologist at Harvard University by the name of Dan Gilbert. Gilbert's best-selling book, Stumbling on Happiness, which I think I've also stumbled across, haha, <laughs> funny, discusses the many ways in which we miscalculate how situations will make us happy or sad and reveals some counterintuitive insights about how to be happy. One of the primary discoveries from researchers like Gilbert is that extreme in 
uh, inescapable situations often trigger a response from our brain that increases positivity and happiness. For example, imagine your house is destroyed in an earthquake or uh, you suffer a serious injury in a car accident and lose the use and lose the use of your legs. When asked to describe the impact of such an event, most people talk about how devastating it would be or it must be. Some people even say they would rather be dead than never be able to walk again. But what researchers find is that when people actually suffer a traumatic event, like you know, living through an, off an earthquake or becoming a para paraplegic, um, the happiness levels are nearly identical six months after the event as they were the day before the event. But how can this actually be? You know, I guess we somehow get used to or we adapt pretty quickly. And I think this is just something that has been always the case for us. You know, um, this might also be the reason why I'm fucking white. Um, because I believe and I guess, you know, as far as I also know, we have all been just black. Like originally we've all been black. Because we have been in Africa, or we have come from Africa, actually, I guess. Um, and it totally makes sense. We adapt to, to our situations. Um, I'm white, because if I wouldn't be white, um, it would be just really hard for me to actually absorb all the vitamin D3. Yeah, I think it's D3 that we're actually absorbing from sunlight somehow, or generating through sunlight. Um, when I wasn't white. And... Um, and I guess, you know, if I'm white and if I'm living in Africa, not that great because it's fucking hot and it would just destroy my fucking skin. And with black people, it is not the case, you know. There are just reasons why some people live in certain areas, I guess, you know. Um, and also, I think some of my teachers said uh, that it is also pretty hard for, for black people. I don't know, by the way, if this is racist or not. I hope it's not. I really hope this is not my intent. Really not my fucking intent. Um... I don't know, like, if it is okay to say black people or if it's, if it's like, Afri African African people or something. I don't know. I, I, I'm really sorry if I just, you know, triggered somebody. I really don't want to do that or was willing to do that. Um, but I guess, you know, um, or as far as I know or, or as I get told or got told... Um, black people pretty much have a hard time to actually get enough vitamin D3 when they are in, you know, U Europe or in North America or something where the sun uh, is not that strong. And it makes sense, you know, it really makes sense that I'm absorbing just as much vitamin D3 as I fucking need. And it also makes sense that people that are just, you know, African people are not suited for this weather. You know, this might also be some of the reasons or this might also be shown by um, people from other countries just uh, wearing other clothes when uh, certain, uh, when it's fucking hot, for example. You know, I do see some um, some people from other countries or originally other countries um, in my town as well or my city as well. You know, they're wearing fucking two shirts when it's fucking 30 degrees Celsius, which is 30 degrees let it calculate, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit, or even more, I think it was actually 32, which would then be 89.6 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which is definitely quite a lot, like, it is warm, it is fucking warm, but how can this be? The impact bias, is it actually a lot to go, it is something to go, to be honest. Uh, traumatic events tend to trigger what Gilbert refers to as our psychological immune system or psychological immune systems remote our brain's ability to deliver a positive outlook and happiness from an inescapable situation. This is the opposite of what we would expect when we imagine such an event. As Gilbert says, people are not aware of the fact that their defenses are more likely to be triggered by intense rather than mild suffering. Thus, the mispredict uh, they mispredict their own emotional reactions to misfortunes of different sizes. Totally. And this effect works in a similar way for extremely positive events. For example, consider how it would feel to win the lottery. Many people assume that winning the lottery, lot lottery would immediately, immediately deliver long-lasting happiness, but researchers says or has found the opposite. Well, I do just really have to add, I do not want to win the lottery. 
I want to be rich by fucking working and by just building my own fucking shit. And I also understand by that, you know, those people that actually won in the lottery do not have the right abilities to kind of handle this kind of money. It's pretty insane. And it's pretty amazing uh, also to see they most often actually get bankrupt after two years or something or even, you know, quicker. You know, I think there actually have been some people that have won, I think, two million or something. And after six months, they didn't have any of that money any longer. You know, maybe they had some cool cars or something, but they didn't have the money. In a very famous study published by researchers at Northwestern University in 1978, it was discovered that the happiness levels of paraplegics and lottery, lottery winners were essentially the same within a year after the event occurred. You read that correctly. One person who won life-changing sum of money and another person lost the use of their limbs and within one year the two people were equally happy. It is important to note that this particular study has not been uh, replicated in the years since it came out, but the general trend has been supported again and again. We have a strong tendency to overestimate the impact that extreme events will have on our lives. Extreme positive and extreme negative events don't actually influence our long-term long levels of happiness nearly as much as we think they would. Researchers refer to to this as the impact bias because we tend to overestimate the length or intensity of happiness that major events will create. The impact bias is one example of the effective forecasting which is a social psychology phenomenon or phenomenon that refers to our generally terrible ability as humans to predict our future emotional stage stages um, or states sorry um, which is actually I think particularly true um, which is something I think everybody can, can see when um, you're talking either with yourself or with other people about um, actually future emotional states, but not in such a severe level or, or on, on such a severe level, but, but also um, in reference to, to some situations. You know, I think uh, people think about their worst uh, the worst case situation is just so devastating, so incredibly devastating that you're not gonna live after it. But in the end, you know, if you think about it in a way, kind of, if you think about it more, and if you think about it more, uh, in a more detailed way, actually, you can see, okay, well, um, it's really not that bad as it, as I thought, or as you thought it actually is, which is pretty interesting. And I think this is it really is kind of just what we do. We can't somehow judge whether we're going to be just extremely fucking happy or just extremely fucking devastated. But yeah, how to be happy, where to go from here. There are two primary takeaways from the impact bias about how to be happy. First, we have a tendency to focus on the thing that changes and forget about the things that don't change. When thinking about winning the lottery, the lottery we imagine that that we imagine that event and all of the money that it, that it will bring in. But we forget about the other 99% of life and how it will remain more or less the same. We will still feel grumpy if we don't get enough sleep. We will still, we will still have to wait in a rush our traffic. We will still have to work out if we want to stay in shape. And we will still have to send in our taxes each fucking year. It will still hurt when we lose a loved one. And it will still feel nice to relax on a Porsche on the pork and watch the sunset. We imagine a change, but we forget the things that stay the same. Second, a challenge is an in impediment, uh, impediment to a particular thing, not to you as a person. In the words of Greek philosopher uh, Epi Epictetus, or Epictetus, going lame is an impediment to your leg, but not to your will. We overestimate how much negative events will harm our lives for, pre uh, for precisely the same reason that we overvalue how much positive events will help our lives. We focus on the thing that occurs, like losing a leg, but forget about all of the other experiences of life. Um, writing thank you notes to friends, watching football games on a weekend, reading a good book, eating a tasty meal, these are all pieces of the good life you can enjoy 
with or without a lag. Mobility issues represent but a small fraction of the experiences available to you. Negative events can create task, task specific challenges, but the human experiences is broad and varied. There is plenty of room for happiness in a life that may seem very foreign or indesirable to you to your current imagination. For more on how to be happy and the fascination ways in which your brains or which your brain creates happiness, read Dan Gilbert's book Stumbling on Happiness. And I do think this is quite an interesting work, I guess. And I'm also gonna just read quickly the footnotes. The first one is from Frightman's Ask Me Anything post on Reddit. I am Rochelle Frightman Chapma, aka the Paralyzed Bridge. The second one is this. Uh, this Dan Gilbert is not to be confused with the Dan Gilbert who owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't know, just um, the Cleveland Cavaliers. I assume it's either a baseball team or it's a football team or it's it's a basketball team, I assume. And the third one is lottery, lottery winners and accident victims is happiness uh, is happiness relative? Question mark. Journal of Personality and Social Psychology from 1978, volume 36, number 8, 917 to 927. This is obvious, but I feel compelled to point out that individual experiences will differ. It is quite possible you know a lottery, lottery winner that loves their life uh, or a paraplegic, paraplegic that is constantly unhappy. The point of these studies and the impact bias is general. It is not to label the experience of everyone will have, but to point out that we drastically overestimate the effect that extreme events have on our lives. In any particular situation, your mileage may vary. And the last one is uh, effective forecasting, something referred to as hedonic forecasting. Something, different name. Same thing, different name. Yeah. Mm. And this is actually it with the episode. I do particularly like this one, uh, even though I was going just through it way too quickly because, I don't know, I just feel that it is a little too much maybe recording three episodes, even though speaking went so incredibly nice today. You know, I just really, I'm really grateful for that. I'm really just enjoying it at the moment. But yeah. And um, this is actually the end of the episode. I do hope that you're doing well. I do hope that I wasn't too fast going through it. I do hope that I've added, you know, just enough to it. I still wish you the best health, of happiness and success. And I also hope that you're going to remind yourself on how you're going to be remembered. So your legacy. So whether you're going to be remembered as a good person or as a bad person. Because you definitely decide. To some degree. Because you can't serve everybody. Also not with your products. But I just really have to thank you for watching, for listening, and I see you the next day or the next time.